uh, before uh, starting going over to gas metal arc welding, let us take a look on uh, we have seen these three types of electrodes, uh, three types of uh, electrodes for manual metal arc welding or shielded metal arc welding. They are the cellulosic electrode, retail electrode and basic electrode. And we have another fourth type which are referred to as metal powder electrode. This will be a, uh, worthwhile to look into this. There uh, uh, of course, those uh, last three types of electrodes, uh, the classification have been done based on the composition of the flux coating. There is also a composition uh, here interesting composition is the metal powder being added to the flux coating. Right. There the purpose of the flux coating was uh, precisely for uh, providing the necessary shielding providing uh, which has a, had a effect on the on the ionization potential thereby the energy content of the heat etc. Now here metal powder is being added metal powder means essential iron powder. So, what is happening it contains an addition of iron powder in the flux coating that means the previously we have seen this metal powder electrodes it can be with cellulosic coating it can be with butyl it can be with basic also right there here additional uh, element we are giving is a iron powder in the flux what it is doing substantially <laughs> improving performance it is improving the performance of the electrode how that we will see the amount of iron powder may range from 5 to even 50 percent that means quite high amount of the flux coating will comprise of iron powder that can be it is on the higher side this is on the lower side that means below 5 percent then we will not refer to it as a metal uh, metal powder electrode. So, the range of metal powder being used is of this order why this is added to increase deposition rate as well as to improve the arc behavior. Deposition rate is increasing as well as the arc behavior in is increasing. Deposition rate is increasing possibly uh, increasing the heat also right. Arc behavior means the stability of the arc is becoming more uh, I mean better. So, in conventional electrode what happens current is carried wholly by the core wire that is the fundamental difference here. Here what happens with iron powder addition the uh, in the flux the coating also becomes conductive near the arc. In the conventional electrode only the wire was carrying, carrying the current. Now here the wire is carrying, carrying the current as well as the coating the flux coating near the arc also behaves its resistance decreases drastically it means it also behaves like a conducting material thereby providing an additional path to the current that is what is happening as if my current carrying area has increased right the current carrying area conductor area has increased. So, arc tends to spread out and metal deposition takes place over a wider area. So, you get a wider arc right and you get a over a wider areas. So, that is advantage, but what is happening um, because of this the in, in, in the way since it is getting an additional path current is flowing over a wider uh, area wider cross section. So, thereby the arc getting spread out it is not a constricted arc it is a spread out arc. So, deposition is taking place over a wider area right. So, what happens reduces the current density at the tip that is one thing current density is decreasing. So, as the current density decreases that reduces penetrating force of the arc. So, fission depth or the penetration depth will reduce it will cause less penetration these things will happen. However, additional conducting area in the arc limits the current surge right when a short circuit takes place between the electrode wire and the job the current surge it is limited it it, it 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 somewhat controls reduces the current surge thereby reduces the occurrence of spatter. So, in a metal coated electrode spattering 
will be less, provides a smoother and more stable arc. Improved side wall fusion, we have seen in that, that means instead of having a deep penetrating force, we will have a better side wall fusion like those uh, movements we have been seeing, this, this kind of motions, right? you will have a better side wall fusion. It will give a flatter weld, less undercut and spatter. Undercut is another defect. This is what is referred to as undercut. When a, suppose the welding is done, at times there is a some uh, uh, some such depression takes place at the edge of the weld band, weld bead. These depressions they are referred to as undercut. That means the metal as it flows towards the fusion zone and there is a void takes place at the surface as if the side has got cut that is referred to as undercut. So, less undercut is expected. Higher deposition rates are achieved by increasing the iron powder content in the flux coating. If I want to increase the deposition rate, I have more flux, more iron content, deposition rate increases. Iron powder content beyond 50 percent causes deterioration in the behavior of the electrode as the coating fuses uneven. So, that does not mean that you go on increasing the iron content. When it becomes more than 50 percent, then it is again harmful. So, it is to be kept within 50 percent, then it is beneficial from the point of view of achieving higher deposition rate. Higher deposition rate is actually achieved not because of additional metal in the flux, but because of the ability to carry more current for the same core diameter. Means, I can use higher current, the welding can be achieved at a higher current level. I give a more current because I have a higher conductor area. So, current carrying capacity is increasing, thereby I, I increase the current level, thereby increase the heat generated and the deposition rate achieved increases. Sir, density of iron is known, so it will not uh, deteriorate in the No, when, when uh, what we are thinking is that, that, that iron in that temperature will melt whatever iron powder is added that also will melt it's 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 not that the solid iron powder will be floating around it will melt and shrink because let it that iron powder is melting and getting getting amalgamated getting alloyed with the molten metal there is no problem that is iron that is not the slag flux coating when burning and forming slag now, within the actually what happens is later also we will see the flux composition is such, we can have the flux composition in such a fashion, I can give some alloying element also in that. Suppose I want to have the uh, metal deposit or the fusion zone chemistry, I want that it should have more of silicon for some reason, I may need or I may say I want somewhat higher percentage of manganese. So, how do I achieve that? One of the way of achieving that would be to choose a suitable electrode wire which will have the required manganese percentage or silicon percentage plus in addition to that I can have the coating or I can have the flux also having those elements which I want there. So, part of it will get diffused because that is not forming the slag that is coming out as a element elemental manganese or elemental iron in this case and going in the alloy and here it is all iron basically with some of the certain percentage of other alloying element. So, that is getting fused with the steel basically. So, that is not a problem right. So, what you see that the this high deposition rate is not achieved because of the additional metal here we are seeing we can achieve high deposition rate that is not more of that iron powder I mean that iron powder is getting melted and getting deposited thereby I am achieving high deposition rate it is not really that it is actually it is increasing the current carrying capacity of the electrode <coughs> such that I can operate it at a higher current level 
because for a given electrode suppose it is capable of handling 175 ampere <coughs> that means if i use 250 ampere electrode will get unduly heated up and will get damaged right because current carrying capacity is less like you may have seen if you are using some say electric iron with the improper cable or the electric heater in your uh, kitchen with a uh, thin cable the cable gets heated up that means the cable does not have the current carrying capacity like this a 15 ampere plug right 5 ampere plug means the plug 5 ampere plug current carrying capacity is 5 ampere. Similarly, here by adding uh, iron powder you are in increasing the capacity thereby give more current and have higher deposition. With increasing welding current generally spatter increases that is another increasing welding current not only it may lead to overheating of the electrode, but spatter also increases. But in case of iron powder electrode rise in spatter is much less. So, that is another advantage. Okay. So, the basic features are increased deposition rate, more stable arc, flatter well deposit means generally you get a smooth uh, deposit not a very uh, I mean uh, high crown okay. not, not like this. Okay. However, it gives less penetration, less chances of undercut less pattern and improved side wall fusion. Yes? The powder is on the inside of the uh, powder is, is in the in that uh, flux mixture. You understand? I mean when the flux mixture is being made, you add iron powder there. That is how you made it like calcium carbonate, calcium fluoride plus. So, then it will not have a protective uh, covering and it No, it no. Protective covering it is being it is it is it is <laughs> providing say a basic electrode with iron powder basic electrode uh, the flux composition primary composition is calcium carbonate and calcium fluoride right and to that i have added say 25 percent additional iron powder in it and thereby produce the paste and apply it over the electrode of course they are all machine manufactured you do it you have a machine to do that dry it up you get the electrode with a flux coating now, when you use it, that flux is having additional iron powder. That is the only difference. But and no, no, you are not getting. You are not getting what is happening in that heat, in that arc heat. Whatever iron powder, it is in the form of iron powder only. That gets melted along with the electrode. Along with the electrode. And rest part of it is there calcium carbonate and calcium fluoride and other whatever is there. They are burning and forming slag and giving fumes as usual that is remaining. Instead of increasing the diameter of the electrode I could have done that way also. Increasing the diameter of the welding wire inside right thereby increasing the current carrying capacity could have done but that has other implications. Here what is happening by providing iron powder the entire electrode is not becoming very conductive. It is only at the <coughs> tip where it is getting heated up where the iron powder is just about to melt. So, that is how that is how just the arc there is getting widened right. So, most widely used uh, well, uh, so what we see that this shielded metal arc welding process, this whole SMAW is the most widely used welding process, particularly for short welds in production, maintenance, and repair work. Like in shipbuilding, you will find wherever uh, there, there there is a, there is a long welds or uh, unobstructed welding, one can implement machine welding. But rest all places you have to do manual, where access is difficult, where the well length is shorter, and obviously where you need to just locally little bit you have to weld for repair purpose, for maintenance purpose, you have no other option other than primarily manual metal arc welding. 
right. So, merits of this process are like it is simple, it is portable, inexpensive welding equipment. These are some of the real merit. Both filler metal, arc and molten metal shielding are provided by the electrode. That means, the total shielding is just by the electrode. Unlike in other process where you will have to give external gas or external flux, it is everything contained in the electrode. Total shielding is produced by the electrode. That means, you only carry a welding torch where you <coughs> clip the electrode and do the welding. You do not need anything else. <coughs> process is less sensitive to wind to wind as compared to gas shielded arc welding process. Suppose you are doing welding in outside environment because in shipbuilding you have to think about that. You have, you not always you will have a very good uh, comfortable uh, shop like environment. You have to do outdoor welding. Now, gas metal arc welding which we will see next uh, there that gets affected the weld quality gets affected if there is a strong wind. Here strong wind means just wind blowing across right. It is less sensitive. It can be used in areas of limited access like I was saying where accessibility is very difficult there I can use. Suppose, this small component has to be welded. So, I can easily access with the welding electrode because that is a narrow long electrode I can access that. That is these are very important aspects suitable for most most of the commonly used metals and alloys means you have various kinds of electrodes available. So, you can choose the right kind of the electrode for a right uh, for the metal for the alloy you are going to weld. So, here the maximum current that can be used is limited by the well there are some of the features limited by the electrical resistance of the core wire right. So, that is what I am saying it is limited by the resistance of the core wire resistance depends on the diameter of the wire depends on the length of the wire the electrode length is fixed the diameter is fixed. So, its resistance is also somewhat fixed. So, there what we are doing by providing that iron powder and increasing the conductivity down at the electrode such that I can apply little more current to achieve more more uh, generate more heat and thereby more deposition. This is what I was telling excessive current may overheat the electrode breaking down the breaking down the flux coating. You may have observed while doing your workshop <coughs> practice that when you uh, try to establish the arc and if you a, a very untrained hand will fail to do that immediately. So, there at times the, it, it gets stuck and the whole electrode gets heated up and becomes red hot. This current is continuously flowing and the resistance of the electrode gives the joule heating and the whole electrode becomes red hot. In that heat the flux gets damaged that means that electrode becomes unusable you have to just throw it. So, that electrode breaking down the flux coating right. So, uh, there what is happening excessive current is flowing basically because it got short circuited it got stuck to the plate excessive current is flowing it is getting damaged. Deposition rates are generally lower than uh, other welding processes. Well, so, these are a very simple schematic of the thing. So, as you can see the power is supplied at the tip of the uh, I mean power flows through the entire electrode unlike in other welding processes that the power is given right at the tip of the electrode as near as possible, but here it is given right at the end of the electrode. So, over the entire electrode the power flows. So, if it gets stuck the whole electrode will get heated up. The power sources for this uh, shielded SMAW, uh, it can be operated with both AC and DC as we have seen, but not all DC electrodes can be operated on AC power supply. They will not perform well. Generally, a constant current power source is preferred, right. Constant current power source, constant current power source means it has a steeper uh, uh, slope of the volt ampere curve that means a smaller change in the current right for a 
a larger change in the arc voltage. That means the current, this is what is a constant current power source. Say this is my current and this is the voltage plotted. So, you will have a wider change in the voltage will produce a lesser change in the current, right? Lesser change in the current that is how it is said constant <coughs> current power source. Why that is important? Because arc voltage is essentially related to arc length. If the arc length increases, the arc voltage increases because arc voltage is nothing but the voltage drop across the arc length. You can think in terms of as if arc length has a resistance R A which is multiplied by the welding current in the circuit. So, the voltage drop across the plasma column is your arc voltage. So, increase in arc voltage essentially means increase in arc length. When I am doing manual welding, my hand may shake little bit that leads to increasing and decreasing of the arc length, small increase and decrease. That small increase and decrease can lead to fluctuation in the heat generated because the current will fluctuate. So, a constant current source, constant current so, uh, power source will reduce that effect. That means, a wider change in voltage will have a less change in the current. Right? So, that is why a constant current power source is preferred. <coughs> So, where a more precise control of the size of molten pool is required as in out of position welding, root possibility of a root gap, a flatter volt ampere curve is desirable. What is that flatter? It is essentially more nearer to constant voltage type. Here what is happening in a flatter, it, it is a steep <coughs> characteristics, right. A flatter characteristics would be another extreme would be like this, right. Here you have the voltage, <coughs> I am just writing the opposite is not it, yeah, right, right. So, here we can see a small change in voltage will have a very high change in current. Same thing probably there also you might have That means, a small change in the voltage will have a substantial change in current. What does that mean? That means, a skilled welder, a skilled welder can just manipulate with the welding electrode <coughs> and vary the deposition rate substantially. Right. That is why it has been mentioned that when you need a more precise control of the uh, size of the molten pool, where it is needed like in out of position welding that could be one place or in the root pass of badly fitted up joints, badly fitted up joints means what? Where you have the root gap ununiform very much, some repair welding you are doing, locally you have gas cut a place and you have to weld something. So, you have very uneven shape. In some places the gap is more, some places the gap is less. Where the gap is more, you have to deposit more metal. Gap is less, you deposit less metal. So, every time you cannot go and change the setting in the machine. Instead, a skilled welder, he will just change the arc length. The changing arc length is in fraction of millimeter <coughs> range, but a skilled welder can do that. And as you can see, by doing a little change in the arc length means little change in the arc voltage, you have a very wider change in the current. So, thereby you can change the melting rate and thereby the deposition rate. So, manual for an unskilled manual welder, constant current is preferable. For a skilled welder, he will prefer a flatter current characteristics. These are referred to as uh, constant C p or C v constant potential or constant voltage power source.
right. Like you have seen here I have mentioned that they are the typical joint geometries right. There is a butt joint uh, with a square butt joint, here is a square butt joint with a backing strip, there is a fillet with a backing strip, there is a single V right with a backing strip, there is the horizontal welding situation, there is a double V, there is a single V for a fillet weld like that. <coughs> so, next we will go over to the gas metal of welding, gas metal of welding process right. As you can see the name previous previous one was shielded metal arc welding SMAW or manual metal arc welding. Here also shielding is being done, but here it is being done by gas this gas metal arc welding or also is referred to as GMAW which is which has some other uh, conventional names also maybe it is worthwhile to know that is MIG metal inert gas no TIG is tungsten inert gas right. So, it is MIG also called MAG metal active gas generally MIG is uh, when you weld with argon or helium <laughs> or mixture active gas is CO2 right CO2 also at times referred to as CO2 welding CO2 welding is nothing but one of the GMAW process gas metal arc welding process GMAW is a universal name that is all. <coughs> So, what we see what are the basic features that here an external gas is used unlike in shielded metal arc welding that the electrode was all in one. It was doing the arcing business, it was doing the as a behaving as a filler metal, it is also doing the shielding purpose for the uh, arc column as well as for the molten metal everything. So, sort of all in one. Here what we have, here we have an external gas source, external gas which is used to shield the arc and the molten pool both. That means, there the molten pool was shielded by molten flux, molten slag, but here that external inert gas which is being pumped in that is uh, 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 giving the required protection to the molten pool as well as the uh, uh, to the arc, arc column because the arc column also needs to be protected. Why? The metal transfer takes place. The heat of fission here is obtained from the arc between a continuous filler wire, filler metal electrode and the weld pool in the base metal. This is also a arc welding process. Here also the heat is generated from the arc which we have from the the difference here is you have a continuous filler metal electrode, a continuous electrode being fed in the process. There we had stick electrodes of a certain fixed length, right, of a certain fixed length. So, the process was that means you start the welding, it ends, electrode ends. So, the small remaining part you throw off, take a new one, again you start. So, we will have over the entire welding length various starts and stops, is not it? That starts and stops will depend on the length of the electrode and having too many starts and stops are not good because wherever you are having starts and stops means suppose one electrode welds up to this much. So, here you have started right and here you have stopped. <coughs> Then again you have started and again you are stopping here. So, this start and stop business will continue. So, these places becomes vulnerable to some defects and not only that it is it is a, a process becomes slower every bomb every certain length you have to throw the butt and put a new electrode again start welding. Whereas, in gas metal arc welding the electrode feeding is continuous. So, you go on continuously 
as long as you can. If it is a continuous long welding, you just go on moving your hand as far as you can sustain, then again stop, again start from there. But the electrode feeding is automatic, right? Through a feeder mechanism, it goes. So, that is a continuous filler metal, right? So, it may be operated in a semi automatic manner, that is what is semi automatic, what I have just now told. That means the feeding is through a feeder mechanism, whereas moving the electrode is manual. So, that can be referred to as a semi automatic process or automatic means you mount it on a carriage which moves automatically and you know can be operated in all positions with appropriate shielding gas, electrode and welding parameters. That means, this is also can be used for all positional welding overhead, vertical, sideways depending on proper shielding gas, electrode dye and welding parameter. So, this is the schematic of the nozzle. So, here you will have the electrode coming out from the contact tube. Here something we have drawn as a contact tube. The contact tube means the power is fed here at this point. This contact tube is connected to the cable. Why contact tube? That is making contact with the electrode going through. So, that is what is the contact tube. Electrode is coming out from the contact tube means here it gets the electrical current. So, one power point will be connected to this, another terminal will be connected to the job, right. So, thereby and uh, and the well maybe you can see uh, schematically. So, essentially it is like this. <coughs> So, your power is connected here to the contact tube and the terminal to the job and a continuous electrode is fed in and through the nozzle you give the so called inert gas. This inert gas provides you the necessary shielding as well as this inert gas acts for the plasma column that gas gets ionized. So, what gas is gas you are giving that will determine the uh, determine the property of the ionized column that will determine how much heat is generated or that will have an effect on the heat generated and thereby it will have an effect on the melting rate, fission rate, uh, fission uh, depth, penetrating power right. So, that is what it is. So, the here the filler metal essentially is a bare electrode wire in the shielded metal arc welding it was a coated electrode. Here it is a bare electrode right? fed through a wire feeder and a welding gun. This is the gun basically I mean the only the uh, last part of the thing a kind of a gun where you have a trigger you trigger it the electrode starts feeding that is nothing but a switch right which starts the feeder uh, feeder motor. So, such that it pulls the wire as well as the remote the machine it switches on. So, the power is also fed to the electrode whatever that is what is referred to as the welding gun and a wire feeder there. The gun delivers both the shielding gas as well as the electrode wire as you can see through here the shielding gas comes out as well as the electrode. So, what are the process characteristics? This GMAW equipment, this is the one thing interesting, it provides for self regulation of the electrical characteristics of the arc. Self regulation means since the wire feeder is constant is 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 a is a mechanical feeder, that means the electrode is getting fed automatically, that means the rate of feeding is constant. Whereas, in a manual metal arc welding rate of feeding dependent on me on the welder how how is because the the movement of hand would be something like this right. Instead of if I make the movement of the hand like this it is different the feeding rate is different 
right but here the feeding is through through a uh, through a so called uh, feeder a wire feeder means mechanical is being put in so it is a uniform input of wire <coughs> uniform feeding of electrode so that needs a regulation of the arc characteristics it should have a automatic self regulation self regulation means control of the current right so operator here needs to control only the travel speed operator needs to control only the travel speed direction and position of the welding torch there in shielded metal arc welding operator also needed to control the arc length because it is not self regulating it is not sensing or not acting of its own unless you change it. The arc length and the wire feed right the arc length and the wire feed they are interconnected because if the wire feed is too fast arc length will tend to become shorter the moment arc length is tend to become shorter then the it should be such that the current should increase burn melt more of the electrode such that regain the required arc length that is regulation self regulation so arc length and the wire feed which in turn controls the current are automatically maintained right? that, that is a that means it has it, it is built in with a self regulation uh, system self regulation facilities <coughs> basically regulation of what of the arc length why arc length because arc length correlates to the arc current which correlates to the deposition rate because I need required because at the end of the day welding means one of the aspect you need is required deposition required metal deposition should take place right. So, here what is done constant potential power source in conjunction with a constant speed electrode feed unit is used constant potential power source means power source having a voltage current characteristics like this which is also referred to as <coughs> flat power source right a voltage current characteristics like this is used ideally it should have been horizontal but it is it is not horizontal in any machine more the machine is expensive it will it will tend to become more horizontal but it will never be perfectly horizontal why this is a slope this is a negative slope right that is the characteristics of the machine why this slope comes this is actually refers to the internal impedance more better to say impedance because it is not only resistance it is essentially LC RLC circuit inside right. So, uh, impedance. <laughs> Anyway, so obviously to have self regulation you need to have a flat characteristics because thereby as the arc length changes it gets regularized by a surge in the current because surge in the current can be will be available from a, a CP power source. So, any change in the torch position will affect a change in the welding current that exactly matches the change in the electrode <laughs> stick out electrode stick out is this length this particular length that means length from the tip of the nozzle from where the electrode is coming out and to that electrode tip where you have the arc. So, this length this is the electrode stick out length. So, it exactly matches the change in the electrode stick out and thus the arc length remains constant. So, finally, the idea is arc length you have to maintain constant because the change in arc length will cause change in current, change in current will cause change in deposition rate. So, it will be deposition will become uneven, right. So, generally this is used, generally this is used that means constant current uh, or constant voltage uh, sorry constant potential CP or CV as you call constant voltage power source is used for gas metal arc welding. In some cases you use a constant current power source with electrode feed unit which is arc voltage controlled. So, essentially the feeder unit 
in this what is happening the feeder unit is simple you have a it's it's a, it's a very simple device to make this, uh, this 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 feeder unit this feeder unit is nothing but you have a motor you, you have two rollers here which are motor driven so the moment you switch on they starts rotating in this direction so it will pull the wire <coughs> So, depending on this feeder diameter and the RPM it is rotating, it will go on feeding it at the same uniform rate. Increase the RPM, rate will increase. So, constant uniform feeding mechanism is very simple and you are using a constant potential power source thereby whenever there is a situation of uh, shortening of the arc length is happening or extending of the arc length, the current level is changing. and bring it back to the required current level. Whereas, in the constant current power source, the variation in the arc length is controlled by changing the feeding rate. That means, this here the RPM changes, that is more difficult. There is in some uh, specific cases, it can be the other option. So, in case of aluminum <laughs> welding, for example, constant current power source is used as well as a constant speed electrode feed unit. So, that is not this, a constant current power source, not a, a feed unit which is arc voltage controlled, that means uh, where we can change that. But here we are using a constant feeding also in aluminum welding. This combination provides a small degree of self regulation. So, you do not have much of regulation. That means, if you are if you are going closer, that means the arc length is getting shorter, it does not increase the current, neither it does not reduce the feeding rate. In this, it was it, as the electrode was be becoming shorter right it was increasing the current like here you can see electrode uh, arc length becoming shorter means what the current is dropping voltage is dropping right arc length shorter means voltage is dropping so as the voltage comes down the current increases right thereby what happens more electrode gets melted and you get back to the required arc length or required arc that is how the regulation is done. Whereas, in the second case where a constant current power source there as the suppose the arc length becomes shorter then you slow down the feeding rate, reduce the feeding rate, electrode feeding rate thereby you control it. But here we see in case of aluminum welding it is neither of them. It is firstly it is a constant current power source is being used and with a constant speed electrode field. Why? What happens? So, this combination provides a small degree of self regulation and requires a high degree of operator skill. Why that is done? There must be some reason. Reason is this because of the high thermal conductivity of aluminum, a highly skilled welder can have a wide range of control over the current which in turn controls the arc energy because depending on the situation he can increase decrease the arc energy. Again the same thing like constant potential shielded metal arc welding. Well, here in gas metal arc welding there we talked about overhead welding your metal getting transferred. So, there is something called metal transfer mechanism, weld metal transfer mechanism, right. So, this is more relevant in case of gas metal arc welding. We can see that there are several uh, way the metal is getting transferred, which is feasible in case of gas metal arc welding, whereas in case of shielded metal arc welding that those variations are not there. 
for this for the reason the kind of uh, the behavior of the plasma column the properties of the plasma column are somewhat fixed there because the kind of gases getting eliminate uh, uh, coming out there depending on that. So, the ionization potentials you cannot play much there also at the same time the current level you cannot increase or decrease very much right. Whereas, in uh, gas metal arc welding these things can be changed that means, the shielding medium uh, what do you call the property of the shielding medium the amount of current being used in the welding process the diameter of the electrode also varies substantially. So, what you see the weld metal transfer characteristics what are they? This metal transfer means what? The metal transfer takes place from the electrode tip to the weld pool. What I was telling that if it is an unfavorable transfer mode you have lot of spatter. Again there can be a favorable <coughs> transfer mode wherein you can have a better penetration right. So, we see there are generally four types of transfer mechanism one is referred to as short circuiting transfer. I mean how the metal is getting transferred from the tip of electrode to the weld pool one is through a mechanism called short circuiting transfer also refer <coughs> referred to as deep transfer DIP deep transfer right. Another is a globular transfer spray transfer pulse transfer. So, we will see what are they. Factors influencing type of metal transfer in the GMW process, what are the factors which will decide or which will effect a spray transfer or a short circuiting transfer or whatever right. They will depend on welding current, whether it is AC or DC supply and its magnitude that means, it heavily depends on the current, what type of current it is, whether it is alternating or a direct as well as its magnitude, electrode diameter, electrode composition, shielding gas will depend also on the shielding gas. Why? Because shielding gas, different shielding gas will have different ionization potential right. So, that also affects the uh, tr metal transfer mechanism, there is a direct effect on the metal transfer mechanism and depending on the metal transfer mechanism your weld quality may change. So, let us first see the what is that short circuiting transfer right. that is also referred to as deep transfer. Why it is called deep transfer? Because the electrode is dipped in the molten pool like when we are doing manual metal arc welding it is the electrode tip was never touching the molten pool only in the beginning we did a kind of a short circuit to initiate the arc which is also referred to as striking the arc you have struck the arc initiated the process and you are continuing welding never you are the electrode tip is touching the molten pool. The moment it touches it extinguishes the arc extinguishes because suddenly there is a drop in the uh, current there will be voltage. drop in voltage suddenly there will be drop in voltage there will be short circuit and the arc will go off. <coughs> but in short circuiting transfer it is just the opposite it is short, short circuit and transfer mode is used for low current operation with lower electrode diameter. Here actually is short circuit the moment it gets short circuited the droplet gets transferred that means, it is a continuous process every at a interval the metal droplet is just touching the molten uh, metal there is a current surge and the metal is getting detached that is what happened that is what is called short circuiting transfer also referred to as deep transfer. This this method is used in GMAW where for low current operation with lesser electrode dia. Lesser electrode dia means electrode dia can be as less as 0 0.8 millimeter. The molten metal forming on the tip of the electrode wire is transferred by the wire <laughs> dipping into the molten oil pool thus causing a momentary short circuit that is why it is called short circuiting transfer or also called deep transfer. Metal is transferred only during a period when the electrode tip is con in contact with the oil pool 
you see when welding is done metal is getting deposited it is never like you open a tap and molten liquid is falling off or water is dropping I mean water flowing out that is a continuous there is a continuity in the flow process. But when you are welding the metal deposition is not a continuous process it is a discrete process means at certain interval metal is going in between there is nothing nothing means no metal is going in between the metal is getting heated up forming the molten uh, bubble and then it is getting increasing in size or getting detached right that is how. So, molten metal forming on tip of the electrode wire is transferred by the wire dipping in the molten weld pool at that time causing a momentary short circuit. Metal is transferred only during a period when the electrode tip is in contact with the molten weld pool. No metal is transferred across the arc column. So, it is another interesting thing. We talked about metal getting transferred across the arc column. Here actually through the arc column there is no metal getting transferred. It is only getting touched, it is getting released. So, this type of metal transfer mode produces a small first freezing weld pool, weld pool, right. So, this method produces a small weld pool and a first freezing type. So, it becomes well suited for joining thin sections that means thinner gauge steel material if you have to weld you have to go for a short circuiting mode a mode of welding which will provide for short circuiting metal transfer if you go for a spray transfer mode it will cut through you won't be able to weld it these are the important aspects right so joining thin sections for out of position welding also it is important because it is a first freezing type. So, overhead welding or vertical welding right for bridging large openings. So, this is the kind of your voltage current uh, I, I mean the uh, voltage and current uh, sort of uh, the what you call the variations will take place over time is something like this. It is not a continuous uh, magnitude voltage or current over the time because what you see the different sequences of events what are taking place something like this that uh, at the event A the because it is a it is a continuous process this event A is again repeated at event G. What is happening? The tip on the action of the arc heat the tip has got heated up has got melted and because of surface tension the molten bubble the molten metal is still sticking to the electrode tip right you imagine the tip has got heated up it has attained the melting temperature the tip has got melted and the molten <coughs> droplet has formed and that is sticking to the tip of the electrode because of surface tension forces because that means the surface tension forces are still higher than the gravitational pull or any other forces acting on that. So, it is sticking to that at that point of time you touch it to the molten pool at the B. I mean here well little bit uh, try to show that it has just as if you have dipped it there is a little plunge in the surface that means there is a molten pool you have just dipped it. So, immediately it gets it start getting detached here it is not uh, very nicely shown it has it should have been totally detached here that necking is forming means it is getting detached right and again the new arc is initiated because the moment it gets detached again the arc is initiated. So, there is a momentary short circuit in this stage from from stage B to D the short circuit uh, extent is at A it is about to touch, B it has touched, C it is getting the effect there is a surge in the current, there is a surge in the current you see the peak current the from here the current is increasing and the arc ignition is taking place at D the moment it is getting detached 
and the arc is started again the metal is melting and so on and so forth. This continues that means the current increases again the current goes down and so on this is the current profile and the short circuiting taking place here. So, the voltage is coming to near 0 right the short circuiting is just about to take at A. So, it is dropping then again it is increasing like that. So, the frequency of this short circuiting and the that is the electrode dipping in the molten pool may vary from 220 to 200 per second. So, that determines the amount of metal transfer whether it is 20 per second droplets or 200 droplets per second right that will depend. So, as the electrolyte touches the molten pool short circuit takes place causing a sharp drop in arc voltage what I am telling right. The molten dro droplet gets detached at D and E position indicating an arc as shown in E and initiating an arc in E and F at D and E it is getting detached E and F it is getting initiated. As the arc is re-established again the same process continues. So, the rate of current increase should be high enough to hit the electrode promote metal transfer right. That means, rate of current increase means that current is increasing should be that at the same time it should be low enough to minimize patter because the moment the sh this we are talking about rate of current increase means at the time of short circuit as the short circuit takes place the current becomes infinite suddenly too high there will be a kind of a explosion expulsion of that molten thing kind of with the explosive force. So, spatter will be there too much. So, that should be a gentle detachment not a explosive detachment. So, that is why it says it should be low enough high enough to do this metal transfer low enough to minimize spatter. So, all these are done the open circuit voltage is kept low enough. So, as to ensure that the drop of the molten metal tip does not detach until it touches the molten pool in the best metal that means to ensure this is to ensure short circuiting transfer not through gravitational transfer right not through the globular transfer because if I increase the voltage that may lead to formation of additional energy being given such that the volume of the molten uh, droplet increases and overcomes the surface tension force and it detaches <coughs> and that is actually a globular transfer. But here I want a transfer taking place when it is short circuiting. So, these are the optimum short circuiting conditions. What you see that a optimum combination of voltage and wire feed will produce best result. So, what you see the zone of good short, short circuiting arc welding conditions is about 2 volt wide. That means, for different wire feed there is a proper arc voltage to be chosen and that band is narrow around within 2 volts that uh, say for a 60 millimeter per second this something like 22, uh, 23, 24 volts probably will be good enough. As I increase the uh, feed rate then I can increase the current a uh, voltage this is I mean well by trial and error or by uh, some uh, uh, experience people they say. So, we will look into little more in the next classes uh, about the gas metal aqua okay. mm -hmm.